Good morning, everyone. You are listening to a live episode of Flaming Freedom via the Liberty Radio Network and also via Ustream. Those of you who are listening to the downloaded podcast, keep in mind you can watch us live or listen to us live via those methods. Just go to flamingfreedom.com and look on the left side of the page. This is your host, Dale. And, and Carlos. And Lauren. All right. So we've got very important stuff to talk about. Very, very important stuff. I hope everyone is tuned in for this. We're going to talk about toilet seat politics. Yes. That's a very big deal that has destroyed relationships. I was up all night worrying. Yeah, like, exactly. Yeah, it's and I'm going to blow all your minds, by the way, with with the actual oh, yeah. solution to the problem. Well, Ooh. right, because y- you have an unusual experience, I guess. I do. I have a lot regard. of experience in a lot of different bathrooms. And I know you have also advised me that the guys should sit down to pee anyway. I didn't say that they should. I, I wouldn't say anybody should do anything. <laughs> but I, I said that they should. Well, crap. Why? You're right. <laughs> Why would you do that? Because instead? it's more comfortable. Don't you enjoy no, sitting I don't down? I'm like having to like push my stuff back. In order it, it, to talk like to the that. microphone. You just have to lean You're forward. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, no, no. I mean, uh, sitting on the toilet and then kind of pushing it you back. You need better posture. I think that's the problem. No, with it's fine standing. I mean, I don't even like sitting in general, though. I should start a website that coaches people how to sit like, on the toilet. I like, I like doing the squatty potty when I'm when I'm going the number two. I haven't anyway. tried one. I really Oh, they're like amazing. To. It just comes out like a perfect log. It's straight out. It's <laughs> oh god. Like, All right. Oh, 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 like a lot. Oh, Describe it. it in I intimate it. detail, why don't you? All right. And also we're going to talk about <laughs> engineering a fetus to be straight. Uh but but less important uh but that's less important. What we're the other thing we're going to talk about that's very important is the physics of gay super speed. Cuz I just got through watching X-Men. Oh, the, it was good. Uh, it's fantastic it is i don't give many movies I'm, I'm 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 serious i don't give many movies five stars i think if you do that too much it doesn't mean anything if i give a movie four stars i was really impressed okay wow. three stars if i go and enjoy a movie i give it three stars four stars i'm really impressed this is a, one of those very rare five star movies i've maybe given mm-hmm. movie five stars 15 20 times in my life you look really serious right now. Yeah. Uh, this is a great movie. Dale is no, not I'm going to go after around. this to and, go see it. And you're going to jizz during the, the, the scene with the super speed character. There's a gay... The, well, I say he's gay. It doesn't come up in this movie. But it came up in the comic books that this super speed character is gay. He came out in the comic his books. His name's Super Speed? What's no, it? it's, his name is Quicksilver. Quicksilver. So okay. this is... It's not really a spoiler. Everyone... that you He's in the trailer. You see a guy moving at super speed. So this is not a spoiler. Just we're not going to do any spoilers of the movie. Don't worry about that. I'm going to carefully avoid them, uh, right? And uh, but but the, you know, there's a super speed character in it, and anyone who's at all familiar with the comic books knows him as Quicksilver, and that he came out in the comics. It doesn't come up in this movie. Like at no point does his sexual orientation become relevant in this movie. Uh, but <laughs> but we know from the comics that he's that he's gay. Uh, so that's kind of cool, and he's a really cool character. I like. There's so many people have said that. He's got well, there's a there's a particular scene you'll know what I'm talking about when you see the movie that he's in and if you don't jizz multiple times watching it then you have no soul that's that's how I feel about you this or scene you're is a just woman. awesome doesn't matter you can have multiple orgasms you should be having multiple orgasms as a woman as well sure so yeah the, yes. the, I think that jizz is exclusive to males right I, I don't know uh, these things. You, you're, yeah, that's yeah, true. Okay. That's true. Okay. Sorry, I should have said uh, multiple orgasms. I, I did online. So there's also a Bieber lookalike who, in, in, I guess, in Holland. No, wait a minute. Is he Danish? He might be Danish. <clears throat> anyway, he is, his job is just that, that people love him because he kind of looks like Justin Bieber. Not even enough to be mistaken for Justin Bieber, just kind of has that look. So he just looks like a lesbian? No, I was going to say, there's, there's lesbians who look more like Justin Bieber than this guy. There's does. a whole website de- devoted to that. Yeah, it's a Tumblr Let, website. This, it's amazing. This, guy, this, this, this guy is super popular just because he like takes selfies all the time. Oh, okay. And, and, and there are companies that send him free stuff, hoping he'll take his picture with the stuff. That's because his job. selfies are so popular. He has like a million followers on Instagram, I think. Instagram is like a selfie place, right? Yeah. I, it's a I picture so. posting site. So we're going to talk about how sex is about pleasure and how that's something that's been lost in the whole discussion about sex. And when you get sex education, it's all they're all talking about the reproductive aspects of sex, hmm. right? 
But yeah. most people don't have sex to reproduce. Like, I would, wouldn't you say that like the va- huge vast majority of sex you're having is not for reproductive purposes? A, a good percentage <laughs> of the time that I'm having sex, I'm thinking about God. I hope I do not reproduce right. anything <laughs> as a result of this. <laughs> right. Like, I just want the pleasure, <laughs> none of the reproduction. That'd be great. Right. So. And uh, and I've said that one of the benefits, one of the perks, people say that like, gay people can't reproduce. That's not true. We absolutely can reproduce. We have the biological capability to do it. We just can't reproduce accidentally. Yeah. Yes. And that's a perk. Uh, that's great. Uh, that's so. true. Yeah. Hmm. I got to so, rethink this thing. Anyway. Yeah, there's also nude male workouts in Denmark, which is, is pretty cool. So we'll, we'll touch on that briefly. There's not much to say about that. Denmark? You can go to Denmark and go to a certain gym at a certain time, and there'll be a bunch of naked men in there <laughs> working out. Hmm. Yeah, it's in Denmark. Go God. figure. Well, and the thing is, is, so I lived in Denmark for a little while. Those people are so good looking, I would never even want to step towards all the right. gym they're just they're just all <laughs> cut and gorgeous aryans yeah, uh, like yeah. hitler swept through there and just goes oh you guys don't need to change anything you're fine yeah <laughs> you're perfect you are perfect <laughs> well that's if your standard of beauty is aryan right you know mine I is know. so they're wonderful yeah. Hmm. yeah oh wait and a puerto my, rican my, so that's my, not racist I, at I all i was gonna folks. say if i was racist of course if not. I, the, uh, if i was getting racist and talking about the perfect race if it had anything to do with my sexual attractions don't get weirded out or anything but my thing is Latinos, so okay. Yeah, that I'm I'm a little racist in that respect. Like that's the perfect race in my mind. All right, so here we go. Um, yeah, so uh, someone made comments. Someone left us a comment because we talked about Jimi Hendrix on a previous episode. Were you on that episode? Yes. No, you, last week's I think. I think that was you actually. No, you were. Carlos. Wasn't it last week? No, it, it was. It was not left last week. It was the week before, wasn't it? And someone said he got out of the military by saying he was gay. Yeah, that was me. That was, yeah, that was Carlos. That was me. Okay. Nimrata posted on that episode that he did not get out of the military by saying he was gay. He was discharged because he was unsuitable, in quotes, for service. Poor marksman, wouldn't make his bed, often got caught napping. Later on, he'd tell people he was discharged due to breaking his ankle. Oh, well, thank you for uh, for fixing me on that. Yeah. 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 So that's yeah. what uh, that's what our listener says. Um, believe what you want. I don't know. I I'm ignorant. Yeah, I wasn't for sure on that. I, I actually asked the question: Was he for that? So yeah. Mm. Okay. Good stuff. Yeah, I, I, it was new to me. I'd never heard anything about him being gay, and then that's why I got out of the military. But whatever it takes, I say do it. Right. Yeah. I got out for being gay. <laughs> the funny thing is, I mean, it's funny now only because it's so long ago and it was extremely stressful and I was terrified and losing sleep and worried about my future at the time was I was actually hating the military so much. You know, we were talking about how being gay is this out we had that we don't have anymore mm-hmm. for the military because it sucks. I mean, a lot of people are trying to get out of the military. You go in and you're committed and you can't get out and it sucks and they take advantage of that. And they exploit you because they know you can't do anything about it. You can't quit your job. So it's it's a situation that is ripe for abuse. And I wanted out. I didn't necessarily want to get out for being gay, but I would have loved to, uh, some way to get out. Just like almost everyone uh, that I knew in the in the Navy, they all hated it because we were being abused. But, and I remember thinking at the time, was like, am I going to come out and try to use this out? And they saved me the trouble of coming to that decision because they came to me about it. <laughs> And then, and all of a sudden, I was like, "Oh, I, I guess this is happening." <laughs> yeah. And I did get kicked out. But I look back on it, and I can't help but think that I can't imagine my life being better off had I stayed in. No, I think I was no. better off yeah. having no. gotten out, even though it they took the choice away from me and just kicked me out. Yeah. But at least I got an honorable discharge, and the sky didn't fall. It was mostly they tell you the sky is going to fall, and I think it, maybe that's exaggerated. It, it can be a bit. hard, though. I mean, I I left the military, and I was I was fined a lot of money. Um, oh, really? What, as part what, of the what? well, it's, it's a complicated issue, and okay. I, I don't know that I'll be speaking to it I properly on the radio. But I was too. I, I was given a bonus, and they kicked me out, and then tried to take a chunk of my bonus back for not fulfilling my commitment. <laughs> Were they successful? Did they <laughs> ultimately no? Oh wow! Uh, because Excellent. there was a class action lawsuit that was actually it actually went to Congress. There was a an organization that Ooh. did that, and uh, wow, that's really dim. Anyway, there's an organization that did that. And and they won, and Congress ruled that they had to give me my money back. So, yeah, that's how that worked out. Folks, stick around. Flaming Freedom, LGBT Libertarians, we will be right back. 
I asked some of the biggest fans of Flaming Freedom where we discuss LGBT topics from a Liberty perspective what sorts of things they'd done to support the show. I've been mining butt coins since they were pennies apiece. I've donated thousands of dollars of butt coin to Flaming Freedom. I gave Dale my handicap placard. Pretty sure that's a felony. We handed over our firstborn. I don't know what they're up to with that boy, but I'm sure it's wholesome. There's too many buttons. I don't know which button you want me to put. I told you already it's a knob. Raise the gain on microphone too, you worthless Rat. I have flamingfreedom.com tattooed across my labia, and I'm a prostitute, so all my clients see it. Wow, that's something. But there's a much easier way to show your appreciation. Just click like and share the episodes on your favorite social media networks. Oh, here we go with the wanting and the needing. And can you do this for me? And can you do that for me? My index mouse finger is all achy from the gout. I can't be We do put a lot of work into making a good show you for you. Click Please, just click like and share. That's all we ask. Flaming Freedom is back. This is your host, Dale. And Lauren. And Carlos. And we, we're going to talk about Satanism. That's one thing I forgot to mention. Because Lauren is upset with me. I'm not that Because I talk upset. about it too much. She's like, you should not be telling people about your religion. No, I, uh, I never said that. No I just, freedom of speech. No. Oh, yes. Um, yes. No, I did say that. Evil, I hate freedom of speech. You're an evil, evil co-host. Mm-hmm. She said all these things verbatim. Lauren no. texts me that every morning that I'm evil, actually. <laughs> yes. That I'm evil Satanist. And I agree. I do have Satanist tendencies. So, yeah. I, yeah. I, I, I'm not like, uh, I like, I don't go to church. I don't go and do black mass. I don't do none of that. I just found the philosophy that I read the book, The, the Church of Satan by Anton LaVey. And I just thought his philosophy was interesting, and he had some very important points to make. And there were a lot of things he said that I didn't agree with. Like, part of the thing is that he says that he's a totally rational person who doesn't believe in a spiritual world, and that we're, he's basically atheist, is what he's saying. And then he goes on and starts talking about magic. I'm like, hold, hold on. Hit the brakes. And that's when I had a problem with it. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a very, very strange thing, and he borrowed a lot of it heavily from objectivism. Right. So a lot of it's like hedonistic objectivism. So there's more emphasis on short term rather than long term values as far as pleasure is concerned. Mm. And then he accentuates the kind of craziness with a bit of the magic thing that ca- yeah. and that came from a, a it felt number- like a different guy, like a different book. I, well, didn't, yeah. I, I couldn't follow how he got from A to B. I really yeah. liked what he was saying in like the first two thirds of the book. And then I, 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 quit, I quit reading. I didn't read the last part of it because it was almost all magic stuff. Dale, oh, I'm so yeah. happy that we can both agree <laughs> on aspects of Satanism without weirding out every single human being. Because generally, whenever I bring up Satanism, people are like, what the hell are you talking about? I think well, I've gotten that reaction. Pretty there's a good reason for that. No, there's right? not. Yeah, the, yes. I understand. Now, the yes. people have a perception that the Christian church has created. And, 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 of, and, of course, Satan represents everything that is wrong. Everything that is, the, if, you, if you worship anything mm-hmm. other than God, that's Satan. It's basically just a way of demonizing anything non-Christian. So, of course, it seems bad to anyone if you're coming from a Christian point of view. Well, yeah, Satan is is just a skeptic. Lauren is biting her tongue right now. Satan's just just a skeptic in the Bible, though. (laughs) He's like like telling Jesus, hey... If you're so powerful, why don't you ask God? Maybe he'll give you some stuff. He's like, I know all the that whole that whole section. I'm so glad you brought that up. Everything he's asking, I'm like, these are totally reasonable questions. And Jesus is like being all dodgy. Yeah, he's got like a he's got a convenient like way to not really address the, the um, question. No, Jesus wait, created Christian this? apologetics wait, in the beginning. It's, 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 there's it's, there's a story in the Bible about Jesus being tested by Satan which, out in the which, desert. Which part of the Bible? Oh I yes, can't yes, remember. in, the, in I, the desert. Yeah, or yeah. actually, no, isn't that in the um the grove, the olive grove, or something? Uh, I don't know. Someone should be. Well, here's around. the thing to think about. That's right before he was crucified, right? So, so the Church of Satan by Anton Lavey is actually atheist. It's really just a philosophy of life, and a lot of it is his is him addressing his criticisms of Christianity, and not just that it's ridiculous and a fiction and things like that, but actually that a lot of the morality of Christianity is really backwards and not good morality. And he's trying to address morality from a more rational point of view, that we do have this one life and that we should live it to the fullest and things like that, and that if you're living your life with the idea that there's this infinite afterlife, then this life becomes insignificant. And that's actually really bad advice to give people is to not live your life to the fullest right now. It's all you have, right? So that there's that. Well, here's the other thing. So our show used to be, hold on real quick. Let me give people a quick update. Our show used to be called Prometheus Unchained. And does anyone know who Prometheus was? Yes. Prometheus was a titan who defied the gods by bringing fire to the people. And so he is an, an incredible symbol of, of liberty and freedom. 
and enlightenment. All these things go together, right? Bringing fire to the people, the gods were anger, angry with him because they were afraid that the people would become too powerful if they had the if they had fire and they wouldn't be dependent on the gods anymore they wouldn't be obedient to the gods anymore and prometheus loved people he loved humanity and he was punished endlessly for that he he went through his own sort of hell having his liver peck, pecked out and eaten by buzzards every single day something like that uh, and it would grow back because he was immortal and he was punished eternally for loving man so much that he tried to put them on par with the gods by giving them fire. And Lucifer, or the, as another term for the devil, is often called Lucifer the light bringer. And he was the one who tempted humans to yeah. eat the fruit of knowledge, right? And to have the knowledge of good and evil and to have free will. All these things were like gifts from Lucifer in a, in a sense. Yeah. And he's demonized for it. Like he was basically saying, you know what, God, instead of human beings being your your happy little pets. Uh, I, I actually see them as like hum as uh, worthy of making their own decisions and being self-sufficient and things like that. All these things were talked about later. They were horrible things. Oh, you're going to have to work for your food and take care of yourselves now instead of just living in the Garden of Eden and just eternal happiness. Well, and Satanism, I mean, outs outside of, say, the Adam and Eve story, is antithetical to the Puritan work ethic, which is oh. work for the sake of work. What happens here? Does it really matter that much? Don't try to feel any kind of legitimate joy. It is antithetical to all that. So, of course, you know, there's going to be this, these statements made by the church in regards to Satanism as a whole, whether that they're eating babies, which was, of course, false. And <laughs> yeah. then, of course, you know, and I think I brought this up last time, the supposed Satanist, uh, Satanist cults in the 1990s working at daycare agencies that were supposedly taking babies and ramming machetes up their asses and throwing them into uh, toilets and flushing them down. I mean, none of it was true whatsoever. <laughs> right. right. Well, all, but, the black but, mass, all the black mass notions of Satanism were also well, created by like the Catholic Church. So a group of daycare workers yeah. actually went to jail for these false allegations, right? Mm -hmm. Went to jail. And it wasn't until the FBI double-checked some of their statements that they were like, wait, 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 wait. wait, wait. In, in the documents, it says <laughs> that people got on... Um, brooms and sort of flying around the room. Yeah, it's obviously not real. Right, and they're like, "Well, we just kind of ignored that part." And it's no, yeah. no, none of this ever happened because there was no physical evidence to show machetes being shoved up, you know, babies. Where anus. are the dead babies? Or who, yeah. who's, but which babies are missing? Like there aren't yeah. any missing babies. <laughs> there weren't any missing up. babies. There's none of that. Yeah. And so there was that kind of thing. So if you say something like Satanism is not that bad, like right. in a conversation, because what it makes it sound like is. Not only do you believe in God and the devil, you chose the bad guy. <laughs> right. Well, <laughs> right. So well, that's part of the problem, right? What's um, that? Well, it, it's entirely about the name. Obviously, this conversation you guys were just having proves that there are people who are good people, who are intelligent, uh, awesome people like yourselves. But you just, you still call it Satanism. And it, it's the it turns term. people off. But Oh, I'm not trying to convert We're, anyone well, to Satanism. It's just a fun thing. conversation so to have. Yeah. If it's about like rational thought, right? It right. is correct. Okay. Right. Then obviously it's irrational to think that there's some magical person that exists who's yeah. who's Satan, right? Who is this character, right? Right. And Satanists admit that that he is a fictional character who's a symbol. But then it's a symbol. But then Satanists are a holes if they're using that term because it, it oh, riles shit. people up it, i just realized i've had the the damn text going this whole time i hate text, when i do that the damn text i'm so sorry it says the no, show's it's, coming it's up it's great because it's the damn text <laughs> because we're talking about satanism right? i'm so caught up in making a good show that i forgot to switch the cams no it's fine go ahead um so i feel like it's it's just mean. Why would you do that to people? Oh, Why can't oh, you just it? call it like <sighs> rational intelligence? It's not mean. It's me. Look, uh, here's the thing. If I have uh, a, if I'm I, trying I, to make a, a statement about a, uh, something, if someone has a philosophy and I have a beef with their philosophy and I'm responding to that as intelligently as I can, that's not be, be, being mean. I'm not attacking them. No, you're I'm not. I'm having a conversation with them and addressing what I think is wrong with their particular point of view. Why? That's not an attack. That's a discussion. Uh, hold the thought. We'll be right back. This is Flaming Freedom. Why did you move to the Shire? This is Flaming Freedom on the Liberty Radio Network and also on Ustream. Those of you who are listening to the downloaded podcast, go to flamingfreedom.com and find out how you can listen to us live next week. We're on at 10 a.m. 
until 11.30 a.m. Eastern Time. So this is your host, Dale. And Lauren. And Carlos. So we were talking about Satanism, which Lauren doesn't like us to do. And no. I pointed out the parallels between <laughs> Satan or Lucifer no, the Lightbringer. I love that you talk about Satanism. That's okay. great. That's fine. Okay. But uh, I pointed out the parallels uh, between Lucifer the Lightbringer and Prometheus the Firebringer. I, I think and it, it, this is it, they're so similar that I can't help but wonder if th- these have common origins. A lot of myths, a lot of mythology has common origins and parallels. You see things about a great flood and multiple m- mythologies. You see things like like this, for instance, well, uh, then, someone who rebels against the gods and brings some kind of asset to humans and is punished for it. Well, to be fair about the flood thing, though, great floods happened all over in these different areas. Oh, sure. There's I'm been not say, I'm not, societies yeah. destroyed, and then they rise back up. It happens all the time. It could happen to us if a fucking meteor were to hit us. We'd be screwed, especially think, because everything is in the cloud now, and so little is actually being written, and nothing's in stone. You know, things like that do occur quite often, right. especially in the in the past. And, and a lot of societies so. were in a very localized area, and if there was a flood in that area, it would feel like the whole world is flooded to yeah. some in a primitive society, and there was little they could do about it in the, with primitive technology, and and so so sure. I mean, it's not surprising that 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 would become part of the. The history, which is also kind of mer- merged in with mythology because they didn't understand how things happened, and so they ascribed things to the gods. If a volcano went off, they ascribed it to the gods. If uh, a, a big storm happened or a flood happened, they would say the gods are angry with us, right? Yeah. Because <laughs> they, they felt out of control. You feel helpless against Mother Nature. We still do to a large extent. We have shelter and things like that, but we, we're still vulnerable to massive acts of nature and so we yeah. feel helpless and you want a sense you want a way to control that and a lot of people thought well if we if we angered the gods we need to figure out what we did that angered the gods so they won't do this to us again <laughs> well just remember folks whenever people talk about how great nature is just remember that the bubonic plague measles <laughs> mumps rubella and aids are all natural yeah yeah so yeah Thanks, I, I God. watched that episode of uh, Free Domain Radio, actually. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, well, yeah, oh. he called it Mother Nature is a Sociopath. I was like, I wrote an article five months ago called Mother Nature is a Bitch. Oh, okay. I was like, damn yeah. it. Yeah. I was like, but mine got no press because Steph's better than me. Let's just be honest here. He's just better. Right in the middle of your mic. Yeah, yeah, he's just a bit better than me when it comes to writing and everything else. Yeah. But yeah, the, the whole article had to do with, like, one... Uh, many of these supposed toxins and metals and everything else that people are so worried about are naturally occurring in dirt in all these different places. And then a lot of it had to do with vaccinations, where I was kind of going into the really, really low amount of stuff that's actually vaccinations that people are so concerned about. Because they go, yeah. oh, well, there's there's aluminum in, in, in there. Well, there's 1,000 times more aluminum in one Tums tablet than all the vaccinations a kid gets. Yeah, It's all about kind of like bringing <laughs> rationality. And I started off with talking about avatar and fern gully and how it's a total like mishmash of irrationality whenever it comes to people's view oh of nature. god the, yeah the sort of nature worship and and yeah. nature is so wonderful and we need to preserve it and yeah i understand i'm not wanting to go treat. into that whole side yeah, topic though anyway. i feel like lauren is just dying to speak here we've uh, we've been hogging the the <clears throat> microphone and this is her topic yeah, she now wanted got... to talk about Sorry about talking that. about okay. Satanism. So. I'm glad that you're not skirting the issue anymore because it's it's a serious thing. There's a lot of people who would probably say, "Why would you call it Satanism? Why would you ever come up with that name?" Because, and I'll, I think that's it's a just, valid question. It's just such a dick move. It's a troll move. It's a troll move. Right. Move. It gets people's attention. It is, but like but that's cool it, when you're you're having a, a podcast or some kind of tele, like show or you're in media. And you just want to get a lot of YouTube hits, and so you call your video like "Women Are Not Smart" or something. That's great. <laughs> a teaser title. Yeah, it's called a teaser title, right? And so, it, it, you, but why put a teaser title on an entire philosophy or on a religion? I don't. I think it's actually I relevant call because. Religion. Well, I, I think it's relevant because if you're living in a society that is hugely dominated by a religious philosophy that you disagree with very strongly then it's it's not unreasonable to say that yes this is in response to that this, this is I, I there's this predominant belief that i have a criticism of and it is appropriate to say look that this is completely backwards the whole morality of it is completely backwards and what is the best representation of that it is to talk it is it, it is it is a it is a, a very effective way of making a statement about the morality of Christianity and what's wrong with it. I've said before that Christianity is a death cult, 
that it's obsessed with torture and pain oh. and then and elevates these things as the, as if there's some sort of uh virtue right uh, well, suffering and torture and pain it's very clear to actually figure that out and express that and even if you're not um being told it, it it's it's clear yes it, it christianity is all of those things and now let's take for example people who call themselves anarchists they're opposed to government they're opposed to having a per- one person own another person or control another person right right so um the that's fine because that's just a na- that's a name that's that is stands alone by itself and it's and it's okay and it's still philosophically it fits whereas if an athe- uh, I'm sorry, not an atheist, a, uh, a Satanist is saying same thing, right? It, yeah, <laughs> Satanists are atheists. Yes, yes, I know. Um, I if, mean, I'm not saying there are some but, there are Satanists out there, uh, but I think they're the mass. They're very much a tiny minority but really, who might just actually believe trolling. in. Yeah, it's just, like a sat- uh, They should call themselves uh, what is the term? A- a- atheists, and they why why call yourself a Satanist? I. I, I think you have a point, and here's the thing. I don't call myself an anarchist in most company. I don't call myself a Satanist mm-hmm. out in the public. I'm on, I am on a talk show where we're, we're trying to have stimulating conversations and have interesting topics, and I think it's totally relevant to do that. I feel like we have, th- th- this is the medium for that. I wouldn't go out in a parking lot at the, at the market basket if there's a, someone preaching on high with their sign, and I wouldn't get out there and start preaching Satanism. I think I would just lose most people at that point. But when people are listening in this kind of medium, when people are listening to a podcast, for instance, they're 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 eager for some stimulating conversation. And it's totally appropriate, I think, to address that by talking about what what Satanism really means. This is a chance where we have someone's ear for a moment and we can talk about it calmly and rationally and they can actually grasp the full context of what we're saying. And I think you've articulated it quite well. I think you've said this is the reason why people call themselves Satanists. But why? What's the real, like, deep reason? Why would they do that? I I don't. What do you? I I feel like I've answered that. What do I need to? You need to clarify your question better. Are they? They're doing it to get attention. Is that it? Is that the only thing? The only reason someone would do it? No, it's because they're also bringing up the uh, it's a how, philosophy. It's, you know, it's not basic, a philosophy it's a, it's a, because you can't have a philosophy, a philosophy on something philosophy. that doesn't exist. You right? absolutely can. You can totally have a philosophy based on a, fish, a fictional character and what that character represents. Sure, you, yes, you can. Yeah, That's it's true. called John Galt. Okay, the, yes, they, they do this all the time. Too. There's, a, there's yeah, a, John, you use a metaphor. Or uh, a kind of a myth that everyone realizes the fact that it's that's that it is mythical in order to kind of summarize some of the views in regards to what you have, which is totally fine. You, you may and as well we, say, why have a symbol? Yeah. Why have a symbol of your philosophy? Yeah. It's, so, it's, just talk about your philosophy. I'm like, well, I would do I will, but meanwhile, this is like in a nutshell. Yeah. It's just like, to me, it sounds like it, it's like I'm a Easter Bunnyist or something. It's it just sounds uh, weird, right? Well, I I'm, think I'm a Santa Clausist. But even even after like, all these conversations we've had, you still does, it shouldn't still sound weird. I don't think. No. After I don't think it should. I think we've explained where where we're coming from. Like I said, Prometheus Unchained. Is it was supposed that, to be that, funny? Is, that a is, it a, title? Is, it a, is it a joke? It, no. it was. Do you think when we when we were called Prometheus Unchained again? Prometheus being an incredible parallel for Satan and Lucifer, the Lightbringer. Prometheus the Firebringer, and our symbol is this titan who's all ripped and sexy and hot, holding a torch up and looking at it like, ah, this is freedom, the flame of freedom, right? And bringing it to the people. Was that? Is what do you? What's your beef with that? For instance, what, what I don't have you, any beef with that. I then like why that. do you have it, beef with, uh, with us talking with about Lucifer for the Lightbringer? Well, okay, let's be honest here. There is a rational reason why, which is that Ooh. everyone connotes Satan. All right, hold that thought. This is Flaming Freedom. This is your host Dale. We're going to be back right. We're going to be back in just a moment. So <laughs> stick around. Hello and good morning, folks. You are listening to Flaming Freedom. These music beds are so quiet. I can't tell when this time for the break. I hope you enjoyed some of the messages from our sponsors. You are listening to us hopefully via the Liberty Radio Network or via Ustream if you're listening to us live. But for those of you who are listening to the downloaded podcast, please go to flamingfreedom.com and look at the left side of the page, and you'll see ways to listen to us live next week. This is your host, Dale. And Carlos. And Lauren. So I think we want to give Lauren the last word here. Um, I pointed out parallels between Prometheus Unchained, yes. Prometheus the and- Titan who brought fire, and Satan, 
uh, or Lucifer the Lightbringer, and how Prometheus is a symbol that represents our show, so, and she seems okay with that. Yeah, so that's why totally not cool. I used to really identify with Prometheus. Um, I think I first heard the, the term in like middle school or something, and I was like, oh, that guy sounds so cool. Like I, I used to, as a little kid, I would collect flashlights, and so I like I love that idea of bringing light and knowledge and being aware of your surroundings and and just just getting it and being self sufficient. It, you know, it's okay. all about you. I get Versus it. Versus Lucifer, then, the light bringer. Right. And you asked me, well, what's wrong with Lucifer? What's wrong with Satan? And because I haven't opened up a book. See, I opened up a book and read about Prometheus. And it was like, this guy's really cool. When I open up books and read about Satan, he sounds terrible. So read The Church of Satan by Anton LaVey. Okay. All right. Read that. And then and we'll, but, maybe we could have another conversation after you've read that. But most people on, in the world have opened up a book and read right this something that says satan's horrible so if you of call course. yourself oh by the way i'm a horrible thing then that's then it just well, but i'm not saying that i'm saying they're they're i know they you're not saying that but okay. you have so to, the, the language that we use is really important if okay. you use language that upsets people and makes them angry and sad then they're never going to listen to you you're going to shut out so many people Jeez. Like you said, you don't say you're an anarchist in public. That's because I, I they, that's, people would just if, shoot if you, you only, down. If you only have a moment to talk to someone, that may be the case. But again, we're discussing so, uh, the topics on this show. We we usually have someone's ear for the for the podcast. You're yes. both and correct it, it, on this point. All right, let's move on. Yeah, oh, you're both correct on this point. Look, uh, language has so much to do with the way that we're going to be. Okay, language has so much to do with you any kind of communication, which makes <laughs> perfect <laughs> sense. So in this particular case. Dale's point is completely correct whenever we're discussing these this thing because we want to be able to talk about this in a rational, instructive kind of way to do a good approach on that. But, yeah, I'm not going to go up to people and immediately go, I, I have a, enough of a problem even talking about objectivism without someone think, saying something stupid about Ayn Rand. <laughs> you know, that's yeah. that's difficult enough as it is. So, yeah, it's instructive to not immediately do that. But there's no problem with kind of discussing the finer points. So. I think we're good on this topic. Yeah. I haven't mentioned that you can call in via Skype to the account In Your Head Shows because I forgot about that. It's a new thing. We we only recently started back accepting calls. So this is a reminder. You can Skype us at In Your Head Shows, and I didn't have it running. So if you've tried before now, um, if you already knew about that and tried, it didn't work. But you can try again now, and you should be able to get through. So, yeah, let's move on. Um, we'll talk about it again. Read The Church of, the Church of Satan by Anton LaVey. Or, or, what, it, no, what's it called? Uh, it's called the Satanic Bible. Yeah. The Satanic oh, Bible. The, the organization is the Church of Satan. I'm sorry. Fabulous. All right. There you go. Now, uh, we have to talk about something very important, and that is the politics of toilet seats, right? This is going to make me have to pee. Yeah, yeah. Well, you'll get a chance to this this next uh, in a moment here, because we'll have a little, little time to do that. All right. So <laughs> here is uh, here's my thought, right? I was wondering, because I've heard about these complaints. The first time I heard about it was on uh, Bill Cosby himself, I think it was, when he talks about the, the, the girls in his family, his daughters, were going conspiring to kill the, the son, the one son, because he did not lift the lid when he peed, and so he would pee on the seat, and that's gross. And I totally relate to that. I'm like, oh, well, of course they're upset then. But it's changed now. Like The complaint that I hear now is people don't put the lid down. And so this made me wonder, like in my family, are you referring to the seat or I, the lid? Because the seat, okay, uh, the, which he called it the lid, but I think he meant the seat. And so there's uh, there's this engineering of the toilet. Here's my thought: Is there like a, a a genetic factor that has to do with the understanding of the engineering of a toilet seat? And is it possible that for most people, this understanding, the ability to understand this engineering, is tied to the Y gene, the Y chromosome? Because there appears to be this disconnect between understanding um, the workings of the toilet seat and whether you're male or female. In my family, however, this was not an issue. So I wonder if they had a mutation, a beneficial mutation that allowed that, that was not attached to the Y chromosome, that allowed women to understand the engineering of the toilet seat. And to, there's this process that goes through my mind as a, as a male, right? And I'll describe it in terms of, uh, of of computer science in terms of programming, right? Like if if uh, I look at the seat, if the seat is up and I need to pee, then just pee, leave it. If the seat is up and I need to poop, then put it down and then poop. 
if you know there's it, it's 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 fairly complicated depending on what I need to do, but I manage to figure it out every single time. Okay, there's have... a little bit of code you have to figure it out. And for a woman it's simpler. Like it's just if seat is up, put down. Then put down. And then do your potty. If you if so, you're dating a girl uh, who cannot figure out to put down the fucking toilet seat, <laughs> she has enough problems as it is. Get the hell away from there. Look, te- <laughs> no, seriously, this whole thing is just being overly sensitive okay. towards women's needs. It's it, no, honestly, <laughs> I'm it is treating guess. women like fucking children over and over and over again when it comes to this. This is okay. just sad. This is ridiculous that we've been talking. No, about. I think both men and women treat each other like children when they're talking about this. I am going to, uh, ready for this? I am going to tell you what the superior answer is. It's okay. not up. It's not down. It's close the lid. Ha. Huh. That way everybody has to just move their arm when they sit down. It's just another extra thing you do. Let me ask something. And it's something. easy and it's fine. And Obviously, there's a benefit about... to it too. The yeah. benefit is you don't drop your hair straightener in the in the toilet. You don't drop your cell phone in the toilet. You can use it as a shelf. It's okay, great. That's, that's, it's, that's reasonable. It's and, the and superior. The I have a friend. And it takes a trans person this to figure this out. This is bourgeois politics, okay? <laughs> if, okay, because if you're in a poverty-stricken home, there's rarely a lid. You're, you are an agent of the bourgeoisie <laughs> and you are forgetting the proletariat whenever we're discussing these points. I'm out. Yeah, there you go. There you go. And I have some friends who have a cat who will drink out of their toilet if the lid is open. So she gets upset with her husband for leaving the lid open, like the whole thing, not just the seat, but putting the whole lid down because the cat will drink out of the toilet. To me, that's a totally reasonable concern, right? But here's the thing about the toilet. Obviously, I'm joking about the genetic defect. I just wanted to get stir some people up. But here, here's the thing. I was trolling. But here's the thing. <laughs> uh, is this kind of like holding the door open? Is this this is there this notion that that's just something men are supposed to do for women to show that they care? Uh, are, are, because some people are offended by the whole idea of men holding doors open for women. Like, oh, those are oversensitive yeah. women too. No, uh, maybe it's so. fine to open up the fucking door for any other human being. But I what, do if, it all the time. what if you're a woman though that complains that men don't do that for you? Oh god! <laughs> uh, right? I mean, aren't you aren't you demonstrating like a kind of helplessness that is not conducive to women being respected? And and I wonder the same thing about toilet seats. Is this like a thing where no no guys are supp- I'm not supposed to have to touch that toilet seat with my feminine hands. Guy, that's guys' work. That's a guy's thing. Just like taking out the trash or mowing the lawn or grilling food outside. It's a guy thing. I shouldn't have to do it. You should do that as a courtesy to me. No. Okay. And is that so, is that? But is that conducive to respecting women? Women are talking about this, but, but they're not talking about the right issue. What women actually are thinking is. Oh my gosh, this toilet seat is filthy. There's pee everywhere. I'm so sick of this. I wish my partner would just sit down because it's a more comfortable and everybody should just try it out because it feels, it's, you're going to, you need, you need to relax. I don't think right? that's, you talked about the squatty potty earlier. The squatty potty helps you relax. A toilet seat sitting down helps you relax. So you can, you can breathe out and just let it all flow. Which I'm not about to pee my pants. I, I um, understand you, that's your point of view that you think I should sit down and well, not necessarily they should. But I recommend like, it. It's it's a sure. great experience. You should sure, try it more often. Fun. I don't think Go that's what most women are you, saying though. I think that's a misrepresentation to imply that most women are expecting their men to sit on the toilet to pee. I think it, they're just want then they there's just this idea that they want this they they want men to constantly be thinking about them instead of themselves. And just like you're supposed to open the door for me, you're supposed to put the toilet seat down for me. You're supposed to be thinking of me instead of yourself. There's just this no, idea. It's not of, about it's putting the toilet seat down. It's to not about woman. serving the woman. It's about not being messy. It's not about not being. No, 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 no. That pig. would be Bill Cosby's talk, which I agreed with. Like if you pee on the seat, then you're not lifting the lid to pee. No, People what are women are complaining about now. Language. What women are complaining about now is that the seat isn't put back down afterward. Before they come in and then they have to actually look at the toilet before they sit on it, which would imply some kind of ability to use some common sense and be be able to take care of themselves and be aware that the toilet is in various states when you approach it, depending on <laughs> on who, who may have used it last. Right. And, and the, there is an awareness of what the state of the toilet is. And if the state is in disrepair and messiness... And gross pee everywhere. That's, that's a problem, and that's, that's what upsets what they're complaining right, that's what, about. That, no, it is though. It, it, no, it's not. Deep in the mind of of women, that's what it is. Men pee Folks, everywhere, and it's gross. I think we're done with our rant. It's just the toilet oh. seat politics is so stupid. But yeah, you should totally break up with a woman. <laughs> you should break up with a woman because you don't want to pass this genetic defect no, you should on talk to your to her children. About it. No, no, no. All right, thanks, folks. Uh, we'll be right back. Uh, stick around. Good morning, folks. Welcome back to the second hour 
only half an hour actually, of Flaming Freedom, where we talk about LGBT issues from a liberty perspective, also known as libertarians just shooting the poop, which is probably a more accurate description, Absolutely. considering we haven't talked about liberty um, all that much. No, it was just pee. I only pee during the break. Oh, okay. Yeah. And, and then I put the I put the lid down too, well, and and all the way. Carlos is very upset with you about that too. Well, no, actually, to be <laughs> fair, she did just use my toilet, and she noticed the fact the seat was already down. Yeah, because I, I just it, it is an automatic down. response for me to do so. And it's funny. So I get a message from my girlfriend between the break, stating, "You know, you live in a privileged society when you're complaining about the fucking toilet." Yeah, which is a totally fair thing, and that's why I'm dating her. It's a first yeah. world problem. There's no doubt about it. It's a first world problem. I will say this, however, I know it seems trivial, and it's, um, I'm having a lot of fun with it and being silly and and trolling our ladies, listeners, and things like that. But I I, I do somewhat fairly strongly believe uh, this is advice to my straight friends out there. I don't have to deal with this as a gay guy, obviously. But advice to my straight friends: leave the toilet seat up. And just see what happens. Just do it as a test. Because if she gets really upset about that, like legitimately angry about that, then you're dating a drama queen and you need to, you know, they say don't stick your wiener in crazy, right? But isn't, no. isn't, yeah. that, isn't that us, though, <laughs> being, um, what's, oh, what's the word? What? I think, well, I mean, I we, we always, I always bring up the fact that it's terrible whenever a woman tries to test you for specific yeah, things. It's crazy. So this is, this Are you is, testing yeah, for you're crazy, being the though? crazy bitch I, I, in that. No, 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 no. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think, I think that may be unfair. Yeah, you're going a, out me, of your way give me a to comparison. mess with her. All right, give That's me a comparison. terrible. Give me a comparison. No, you're, it's not out of your way. It's going to happen sooner or later. Just go ahead and do it early. It's going to happen, but you're, you're, and you want to find out you're early if she's going to make a fuss about it. You're doing something that's not you. It's not normally what she would do. No, it totally is what I would normally do. I leave the oh, toilet well, seat up all the time. Oh, well, then that's fine, and you should do, do that if to, you're Just do it early and see if there's going to be a, an explosion and of drama. And to be fair, <laughs> Dale, you're going to run into the issue a little bit less, maybe because... It's not messing with someone, because it should not mess with you. Like, that yeah. should not mess with someone. If I did something specifically to annoy her, that would be kind of fucked up. Yeah, but you're still, like... like it, if seeing what her reaction is and you're trying sure. to, you're like creating a scenario that's still not perfect or not good. Although, or not, and, no, and the thing no, is, there, there's a, a lot of good. Uh, what's a comparison? So, what's a test well, the, that a woman does to a man? Yeah, but what's a comparison? Does, um, I, I'm guessing some of the things are like texting something from back to, to don't, oh, don't give oh, in. Don't they, give in. If they text right back, that means that they're needy. Like there's all these different like little. Is tests that something of, women do of men? Is they mm -hmm. test right back? Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. it's it's like a testing of if they're too needy. Um, I have oh, a solution they, for that too. Yeah, there's that's there, I, that's a much more of a reach, I think, though. Oh, like, if it's, you do something it's really totally trivial, reach. and there's a dramatic reaction in response. That's different, I think, than than assigning a whole bunch of meaning to something very trivial. Yeah. Right? If, like if, if someone if, if if you do something really trivial and something dramatic happens in response versus if you do something and apply a bunch of meaning to a very trivial response, I think that's not comparable. Well, and there's also a lot of other rational things that you can notice, not even necessarily testing. Like if your girlfriend takes Two hours to put on makeup every fucking day. You're dealing with a crazy person. No, <laughs> you're well, dealing no, just, with a crazy just be person. aware that you're going to have to deal with that. That's going to be two Maybe, hours. Why is that crazy? Maybe something. she likes to put makeup on for that long. Yeah, like, yeah, I wouldn't whatever. say it's crazy, okay, but you women, just need no, to be aware wait, that that's what you're getting into, and if that's a problem for you, you need to know about it. Go ahead, Lauren. That's totally normal. Women will take as long as they want to get ready. Like if I had eight hours to get ready for the show this morning, I would have I would have taken all eight hours to get ready. I'm, <laughs> okay. I'm dead serious. I got better shit to do. All right. And so should she. Well, is that considered of the person who's waiting for you, though? If no. some, if you, if you know someone is sitting there waiting for you, and you you have plans to go somewhere, and and if you're dating the uh, guy and he's the one who's supposed to kind of find you attractive in this particular case, and then you're taking two hours anyway, you may be dealing with a little bit of a weird issue. That's here. because I, you're not doing it for the guy; you're doing it for yourself. Okay, yeah, well, that sounds like bullshit. That, here's to me. the thing: if you don't no, mind waiting, no, it's not waiting, bullshit. Yeah. It's simple. If you don't mind waiting two hours every time you want to go somewhere then it's not a problem. If you do mind waiting two hours every time you want to go somewhere, you might not be compatible. It's not that there's anything wrong with her. You just might not be compatible because you're going to be, just keep in mind, you're going to be waiting two hours every time you want to go somewhere, and eventually it's going to wear on your patience. Yeah. And it's going to hurt things. Yep. I don't know. I'm talking about straight stuff on a gay show. <laughs> no, yeah, I was that's like, it. No more, no more straight stuff. I was wondering, stuff. like, Dale, when is this? When are Let's you going to start gay. dating this woman? Get, Who gonna, is she? We're going to get really Weird. gay right away because the show is totally off track. This is a gay show. <laughs> so um, we're going to talk about the physics of gay super speed, right? We mentioned this before. Quicksilver is a cool character in the latest X-Men movie, which is a five-star movie. Dale, are you rubbing your I'm rubbing nipples? my nipples. <laughs> 
And, um, He's getting so excited right now. And, uh, that's what he does. He gets me. He gets me all worked up. Uh, Evan Peters is playing him. Who's uh, I think Evan Peters is awesome. Oh. If you've been watching him in American Horror Story, he plays all these different parts very well, and he sells it really well. He's been a super. He's been a villain. An evil, dark, scary character in one season, and the next season he's a good guy, and he he's completely different each time, and uh, it's it's an impressive show. You should check it out. And anyway, he's also playing Quicksilver in this movie. Quicksilver, as we know from the comic books, is gay. We don't know this from the movie. It doesn't come up. But anyway... I was thinking about this. He, my understanding, and someone who listens, who who reads the comics, can correct me if they like by skyping us at In Your Head Shows. But my understanding is that Quicksilver's mutation, hap- when it happened, he sped up re- relative to everything else. Like the whole world started moving in slow motion for him. I, this is not this is not really clear in the movie, but but this is my understanding of from the from the comic book. Like that, the whole world is in slow motion for him all the time. Like he can't snap out of it. It's that, always like that. that. Sounds terrible. Right? He had to learn. I, maybe it happened gradually. Like it maybe like it wasn't like overnight. All of a sudden, everything is moving in slow motion, uh, because that would be like really traumatic, I guess. But I think maybe it happened slowly. So he sort of learned, for instance, how to decipher what someone was saying when they're going, you know, <laughs> speaking yeah. in slow motion and then trying to understand what they're saying. He had to learn to decipher that. And then yeah. he had to learn to speak in slow motion so that people can understand what he's saying. All this stuff, because he's just always sped up. Unlike the Flash, for instance. I don't think the Flash has that no. issue. Flash, is, Flash can turn his powers on and off or something. So, um, so, there, so that's his life. And I was thinking about this, too. Like when he interacts with things, like if you're interacting, if you're, if you're in that world where everything's in slow motion, like you can see like a, an arrow coming towards you. And you just you can just casually just kind of step to the side, or you can even move the arrow right because you're moving really fast. It's got a certain amount of momentum based on its weight, so you could like grab the arrow, and, yeah. and it's trivial. Like that was that has a lot of momentum. Like if it's coming towards you and you're moving super fast, I, can't, I you know I'm thinking like yeah you can get out of the way, but if you just stood there, would it even be able to penetrate you? Because it's moving really slow. It doesn't seem to have momentum to you from your perspective. It doesn't have that much momentum. Because your own momentum, you have the ability to accelerate your own momentum so quickly. So his entire body has that perspective? I, I, I guess so. I don't know how else it would be. Because how else would he breathe properly? Like, he's yeah. breathing normally and everything. Uh, if he's, you know, if he's, if he, if he touches you at super speed, his hand is moving with an incredible momentum. Yeah, he can hurt you pretty bad. You will break your ribs instantly. Right. Yeah. right. Can you imagine a hand moving? And, but, but to him, it's, it's nothing. I'm just shoving you in the chest. So this mutant power only is beneficial if you're constantly getting shot at, <laughs> whether that be arrows or anything. Because well, like, I don't outside know about that. Of that, think about how much time you have in the day if everything is in slow motion. Yeah, yeah but you're not enjoying the day. And, day. To read a book, to do whatever. But yeah, I would, enjoy, I would enjoy the day them. more. I would like, you know, if I was with someone I really loved or cared about, I could just like sit there and adore them forever. And they could like. That's creepy. <laughs> Because they're like, sta- oh, they're like standing oh, it's there. It's almost as creepy as, as putting the toilet seat up there deliberately to. Oh, whatever. So don't oh, don't change so the subject again. You're creeping me We're out. Moved, we've exactly. moved on. Exactly. Like Twilight, the guy no, staring at his girlfriend yeah. sleeping, right? Oh, yeah. That was super creepy. No, oh, she, everything she would, about that was. That entire movie was creepy as hell. Right. Yeah. That yeah. is creepy. But no, if she knows that you're you're there and you're adoring her, like that's very flattering, right? Uh, I guess. Yeah. But it can be really boring. You have to be oh, open about these inter- things. You're when to you're not open, people, then it's creepy. The super creepy movies interact- that take a photo of your girlfriend while she's asleep. They're like, oh, you just look so beautiful. You're sleeping. Yeah. I'm like, hey, this is, is kind of creepy. What's Don't creepier friends still, do that all the time? What's creepier other? still is, and we're going to get back on track after this. What's creepier still is when a girl takes a picture of her, does a selfie and pretends to be asleep and says, my boyfriend taking a picture of me. And then someone, they, they don't realize that there was a reflection showing them doing that or whatever. That's my a, boyfriend took a picture of me sleeping, and they're actually doing a selfie. Wow, that's a that's a weird person. Yes, it's a very weird. It's a person. desperate. But back individual. to gay, the physics of gay super speed. <laughs> we'll have to continue yes, in a moment. We will come back to it. Yeah, but we want to talk about this because uh, what about like pooping? Does he like break toilets with by launching poops out at super speed? You can control your poop. You can take it from someone who's be... really anal. You can control your poop. Uh, all right, we'll be right back. We're going to talk about super poops. This is Flaming Freedom. So super poops. That's how we ended the the last segment. Uh, Quicksilver does everything really fast. I think he's always in sped up mode. I don't think he can turn it on and off. 
And so I can imagine how bored he must get waiting for everybody to catch up to him. Like waiting for someone to finish a sentence for him is just incredibly tedious because it takes like five minutes, maybe, or longer. I don't know. I mean, he, uh, he can move really fast. Like he literally, that, you shoot an arrow, he can outrun that arrow, no problem. I like, feel no that problem. way in real life all the time with people. Like I want to speed them up. I'm like, can you just get to your fucking point? They <laughs> yeah. say, um, every single five seconds. Yeah. And you're just like, Jesus Christ. So I listen to like podcasts, for instance, like two times the speed. Because it's 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 just too too slow half the time. I've done that before too. Express. I forget to do it sometimes, but yeah, like some people's voices are nice enough that you're willing to deal with the pause. Like Jeffrey Tucker, you know, you listen to him, you're like, okay, that's a beautiful voice. But other people, especially science podcasts, you're just like, come on, give well, us me quicker. Here's the physics, though. Right, if he can add momentum very rapidly, he he has. There's a lot of energy going on. Obviously, if you take a human body and it's moving, make it move faster than a speeding bullet in a split second. You're adding a lot of momentum to your body very suddenly, which would tear you to pieces normally unless you were had somehow protected. So pre- presumably part of his power is that he can endure these sudden increases in momentum, right? Momentum is mass times speed, right? Yeah. So, um, so obviously like a bullet, for instance, that's a 50 caliber moving at half the speed of a 20 caliber bullet has still got more momentum relatively, you know, because it's a more mass, significantly more mass than a 20 caliber bullet, right? Yeah. So, um... So you imagine this guy's whole body is, is able to add momentum very suddenly, and by the same reasoning, it would be resistant to momentum from other sources, right? If a bullet is moving toward him and he can watch it coming, like, oh, here it comes, it's like a, a really slow, <laughs> then it's just going to hit him, and it's just going to like push on him a little bit and then drop. I would think, like, how, how else would it, wouldn't it? He yeah. would be resistant to the momentum of the bullet because he's resistant to, to drastic changes in momentum. Yeah. I would think I'm just thinking of the physics of it. Cause again, if he's running around and there's like, if he ran and, and something, let's say you drop this, this is my EpiPen. It's uh, I thought that was a sex toy. For if I second. ran through it at super speed, it would like impale me. Yeah. Unless I was resistant to sudden changes in momentum yeah. or something. So, and then poops. All right. So he's pooping and his, uh, his sphincter muscles are like pushing it out super fast, launching it out like a, like a, like a weapon. So he would also have to have, like, super strength in order to compensate for any kind of wounds or anything else. Because, like, if you even think about, so uh, the thing about, like, cars is that whenever you go from, like, whenever you're trying to reach an extra 10 miles per hour, you know, if you're going 200 to 210, sometimes you need an extra 120 horsepower in that car just to be able to get there. That Because the wind resistance, it goes from being, like, you know, a light oh, breeze right. to essentially driving through a fruitcake. Yeah, you're driving, you're colliding with a lot more air, mo- air yeah, molecules exactly. in the so, same yeah. span of time. You're right, yeah. exactly. It's friction. So reducing friction is helpful for all of that. But I'm just thinking, like, how many toilets has he broken from pooping? Like, does he have to no, go outside he, and, like, launch his poop into the air? He controls <laughs> like it. Like a bullet? He just, he just holds it in and just slowly <laughs> releases it. Like, <sighs> These are the questions that people ask Stan you Lee can, at like comic book conventions. Yeah, and yeah. He's just like, God he's like, damn I haven't it. thought it through that hard. Yeah. Like, please don't overthink this or does it work? Anymore? Well, yeah. William Shatner <laughs> reacted that way whenever people would ask him things about Star Trek. He's like, God, you guys oh, are yeah. a bunch of nerds. Oh, did you see Galaxy Quest? They yeah. spoofed it. In oh, Galaxy really? Quest, they had people asking him and he's like, I don't freaking know. I, I, I didn't write the episode. I didn't think about it. I just read my lines. Like, what the hell? And all these geeks, of course, are analyzing every little detail. I think it's funny, though, just to talk about it. Like, okay, here's the ramifications of the fact that you move at super speed all the time. Yeah. And and, and I'm just thinking that that turd has to be super uncomfortable. If you're trying to, like, really slowly. <laughs> well, like, some oh people my God. have really great control over their I don't, you still wouldn't want to, like, you still want to do. And then I'm thinking, Maybe okay, he uses so, a power. Okay, we were Maybe talking, he could, like, kill someone by shitting so fast. That it yeah. like cuts through them. Man, imagine that. Turn that turn would be deadly. You you live thirty years in your entire life. You know you you wear a seatbelt. His, his you peace stream. His peace stream would be a water lance. You do all these things to try and make sure you you know you eat a nutritious diet. You don't smoke cigarettes. You don't drink alcohol. One day someone shits on your chest and you're just dead. You know that's really the worst way to go. All right, so imagine. All right, so imagine you're moving so fast that you can just casually walk past a bullet that is moving. You can see it moving and it's like you know. And you just casually walk past it. That's how fast you're moving. So imagine your pea stream and the speed of that compared to that bullet. Yeah. Your pea stream would be moving faster than a bullet. Wow. That would be that would cut someone up. If you peed on them, it would just cut. Them. So he you have to have a Kevlar toilet. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, the Kevlar toilet in order to protect it, and you're gonna have to replace it every or now and then. Just go outside and poop into a hole in the ground because it's just gonna. Well, like, it's gonna explode. go to like Indochina. I mean, you're gonna be shooting <laughs> yeah. into that yeah. thing so often. It's, hold on, hold on, sex. Oh, think you're about, just you're gonna have to work sex. your body to do slow motion. We're talking or about else gay, you're gonna break that woman's hips instantly. Gay super speed. So this would be a butt, not a not. Imagine butt boofooing someone at super speed. Or trying not to hurt them when you move at super Wait, speed. So it's having, trying to slow yourself down and still somehow enjoy it, but like you can't, you don't want to like rip their behind to shreds. Wait, from so their... maybe that's why he's gay because the only way he likes it is if he's the catcher. So he doesn't have to worry about the concern. He can He'd just like feel sit it. He'd be sitting there like waiting for but them. But still, to... at least he's not breaking anyone, you know, um, instantaneously true. whenever he's having sex with them. I think true. I figured it out. Ooh. I think he just has some kind of like disconnection from his body. Like he doesn't feel like his perception or who he is in his mind and and how he feels isn't the same as what his body is in real life. So he, he's perceiving all of this stuff, but he is still mortal. He's still you yeah. Know, if you if you stab him, it still hurts. It's still well. Um, you'd have to be able to stab him at super speed for it to hurt him. I would think right. But if you're coming at him, like he's <laughs> he's getting ready to poke you, and then and then he can he can see that and he can move out of the way in time. And right. it's not it's not that he's like. Using some extra heavy force. I mean, I haven't seen the movies. Maybe so he's not having yeah. much sex because it's just boring. I think a sharp enough sex object, would not be boring, even moving at a very slow seven. speed, could cut you. No, I like. Uh, okay, no, there's too many details. Go for it. Okay, but but the thing is, like, so for sex, for me, just going slow in the first place can get boring quite quickly. You know, just like, <laughs> just like, uh, yeah, pay attention, baby. ladies. Well, do you this have sex, sex with women? Is be like with huh? Carlos. Do you have sex with women? I do have sex with women. Okay. Of course so, he does. Yeah, I'm the straight oh, guy. Oh, I forgot to man. mention that Carlos is our token straight guy today. Yeah. Yeah. And I, yes, absolutely. No, but like, so like slow sex every single time. That sounds awful. All right. We, I think we should, we've bored people to death oh, with this poor, uh, super speed. No, guy. everyone wants to hear about my sexual practices. So, I don't know what you're talking about. Sex is about pleasure. This is, the, we'll, we'll have to wrap up with this. We didn't get to most of our topics. That's fine. We skipped the word of the day. We did. But it's it's kind of relevant. We did, and that was your word, too. I'm sorry. It's okay. Podcastinate. Yeah. Podcastinate. It's, it's like... <laughs> is no, to it's... put off work or more pressing issues by listening to podcasts. Holy I strongly shit. encourage this, That's by the way. That's my entire life. I know. I was, I was trying to do, like, normal stuff, and I kept going on the internet and looking up Flaming Freedom Show Prep, and I'm, it's... It was terrible. <laughs> no, that's good, though. You should do that. No, uh, yeah. I, if it's Flaming Freedom, it's okay. And what helps this is by us. listening to things in two times. And look, we just did a full circle there, guys. Good job, everyone. Yes. <laughs> right. So sex is about pleasure, right? When uh, <laughs> when a kid is taught sex education in school, it's, uh, it's uh, mine was incredibly clinical. They kind of briefly touched on the fact that, oh, yeah, it feels good when you do this and you have wet dreams. And they mentioned that stuff. But mostly they talked about, oh, and the sperm goes to the egg and does this and does that. And like... Hmm. Yeah, I just want to boff because it feels good on my wiener. All right, folks, thanks for listening. We'll be back next week, 10 a.m. until 11.30 via the Liberty Radio Network or Ustream Eastern Time. This has been Flaming Freedom. Thanks for joining us. Bye, everyone. <laughs>